G'day you beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. Today we're taking a look at Kwong. We're taking a look at his stats, his scaling, his abilities, and my build for him, which is simply called Kim Jong Kwong. So if you're going to like this video, please smash that like button, leave me a comment, let me know what you think of the build, make any suggestions whatsoever, and subscribe if you're not already. But with that said, guys, let's get into it. Alright, taking a look at Kwong, he's a auto-corruption melee hero, he's an initiator, wild, durable attacker, and ganker. He has a basic attack power of 6, ability attack power of 4, a durability of 7, and a mobility of 5. Okay, looking at his stats. His health starts at 585, he gains 79 per level to end up at 1691, round about uh, normal fighter health. He's got 2 health regen at base, 6.2 at max level, that's pretty standard. As with his mana, 200 at the start ends up at 704. His mana regen starts at 0.7 and ends up at 2. He is a fighter, so he doesn't have much. Being a fighter, he starts with 14 basic armor, gets 1.25 per level, ending up at 31.5. And as per most uh, other heroes, he starts with 20 ability armor and ends up at 30.5. Okay, taking a look at his basic attack called Slice. It does 58 damage base, he gets 1 damage per level. His power scaling is only 0.6, which is, it's not really that bad for a fighter. Um, and his cleave damage is 0.2, meaning that uh, any minion, for example, that is to the side of the minion you're aiming at, will take 20% of the damage that the middle minion does, as long as they are within range. Okay, taking a look at his passive, which is called Gift of the Heavens, Kong Sword Burst with Light, creating an aura around it which grants lifesteal and spell lifesteal to both Kwong and allies around him. So the lifesteal for Kwong starts at 8, uh, it then goes to 10.33, 12.67, and then 15% lifesteal, which is a good amount. His allies within 2000 range will also get 5 up to 10% lifesteal. So this, in my opinion, is probably the part of his kit that makes him makes him amazing. So within 2,000 units, uh, that's giving your carry an extra 10% lifesteal. It's giving any other fighter 10% lifesteal. It is giving casters 10% lifesteal as well, so who, you don't really care too much about that. But it's allowing your carry and your other fighter if you have one to do so much more damage this is amazing in team fights it also if you take it first allows you to have amazing sustain in the jungle early game allowing you to take a scythe instead of a siphon and just have amazing uh, clear in the jungle uh, once you get to level two you will take uh, your light of the heavens it just it just makes life so much easier clearing jungle Next up we have Judgment of the Heaven. Kwong throws his sword to the heavens. When it lands, it deals ability damage and tethers enemies to it. Sword remains planted in the ground forever until re-triggered or the next basic attack. Starts off doing 60 damage, ends up at 120. The mana cost is pretty cheap, starting at 70 and ending up at 85. The tether duration starts at 1.75 and ends up at 3.25 seconds. The power scaling is only 0.25, but you're not really using this to do damage. And the cooldown is a flat 14 seconds. Now clearly this is obvious um, what this is good for, it's a great ganking tool, uh, just securing kills for your team, um, and it also uh, works in conjunction with the rest of your abilities that we're going to go on to next. Uh, but another great thing to use it for is um, juking people. You can have your sword somewhere and go to retreat somewhere else, and if you know they're chasing you, you can alt to your sword. You can also leave it in front of a tower or on a tower so you can quickly get back there if you need to. Uh, it's just a really good ability, great tether. Uh, 3.25 seconds is definitely nothing to turn your nose up at. Okay, next up we have Light of the Heavens. Beams of Light strike Kwong's sword, dealing AoE ability damage around it and giving Kwong basic armor and ability armor. Now the damage starts at 75 and ends up at 240, which is a decent amount of damage. It has 0.5 power scaling, meaning that for every 100 power you put on your build, you'll add 50 damage to this ability. It has a flat mana cost of 65. The uh, cooldown starts at 16 seconds, ends up at 10, which is really, really nice, especially considering that the ability armor and uh, basic armor that you're given 
goes from at level 1 40, 60, 80 and 100 at max level and it, that lasts for 2.5 seconds. Now the 2.5 seconds doesn't seem like much but 100 armor is really really great and you uh, tie that in with his uh, lifesteal and he's very very hard to deal with sometimes. Now the uh, light of the heavens does not um, strike around Kwong, it strikes his sword. So the damage that people are taking will always be around his sword. Okay, so if the sword is on the ground in a lane somewhere and someone is standing next to it and you use Light of the Heavens and they're standing there, they will take damage. Anything that is on you at that time where you don't have your sword will not take damage. But regardless of where your sword is, you will get the armor still. You don't have to have your sword in hand or be close to your hand, uh, close to your sword to actually get the armor bonus. Okay, last up we have his ultimate, which is Fury of the Heavens. Kwong spins his blade around him in an AoE, damaging and slowing enemies. If his sword has been thrown and it is out in the world, he will teleport to it before attacking. Now, the ability damage starts at 220 and ends up at 420. The power scaling is 0.8, which means that you'll get 80 damage added to this ability for every 100 power on your build. The mana cost starts at 90 and ends up at 130. The cooldown starts at 85 seconds and ends up at 65 seconds. And the slow is 400 movement speed slow, which lasts for 2 seconds. Uh, this is, it's a, it's a very good ultimate, considering the fact that uh, it's an AoE ultimate. Um, it will hit anyone that is tethered and all the minions around him. Uh, as it says, you can use this to teleport to your sword. So like I said before, if you're leaving your sword on your tower to get back, you can alt to it and at max level that's only another 65 seconds to get it back and it's only 130 mana so you're probably going to have most of that back before you uh, get your ultimate again anyway. You can use this as an evade tool, uh, throw your sword up onto a ledge that people can't get to, throw it on the ground and run a different way and then use your ultimate to get back to your sword and get out of there. Uh, it works really really well when uh, used in conjunction with teammates. So you have a Decker and a Howitzer, you pin a bunch of people together, Decker ults, Howie ults, uh, and it's pretty much game over once you ult in there as well. Um, so it's a really, really good um, ultimate. All in all, Kong is an amazing hero. He uh, He's very, very beneficial to our team. He was very beneficial to my team's win in the uh, Alpha Crucius um, first match that we played. Uh, he played a very big role in that, uh, and I really, really like him. I always have since he first came out. Um, so, we'll move on to my build for him, which is predominantly tanky. It's not a tanky crit build, uh, it's just a pretty much a tanky thermobomb build. So we'll go over there and we'll have a look at that. Alright, here we are over on the Paragon deck builder. This is Kim Jong Kwong. Uh, and this is my build. Okay, so we're taking the Centurion. As I said, this is a tanky build. So the Centurion is going to give you uh, 250 max health. And it's going to give you all the prime bonuses uh, as they currently stand. We take two cast tokens. These, or as per or as per usual, they're up to you. Especially as a jungler, take what you feel like you need. I always just like to have a cast token in case I can't finish a card off. So we have two Whirling Wands, one of which is our early game card with three minor kinetics, another one that has three kinetics, that's our end game card. We have a Guardian's Ward with three greater healths. We have a Guardian Scythe with three minor strikes. Uh, obviously that's our first card. We have a Void Steel Dagger with three major strikes. And we have two more with three minor strikes. We have a Sorcerer's Ward as well, which is a dummy ward. This is the first thing that I spawn with. I go and put a ward down and then I back and delete this and put a Guardian Scythe on. And then we have our armor. So we're running two cards, Blood Soaked Armor uh, for our basic uh, ability, uh, basic armor, not a basic ability armor, with uh, two minor guards and a guard. Now, the Blood Soaked Armor is an active card that for six seconds when hit by a basic attack applies a bleed stack to attacker. This is really, really good in a team fight. Uh, it's amazing, even just in a 1v1 scenario, uh, or if you are tanking for your carry, uh, these bleed stacks are quite incredible. They, uh, they do add up and they do help. 
Uh, and we are also getting a little bit of attack speed for free out of that, but that's not that's not much, but still. Okay, so next up we have Thermo Bond, which is a unique passive. Uh, we're running three barriers on this, and the unique passive determination heal for twelve percent of your max health over four seconds after being hit by a stun root or knock up, and this effect can stack. Uh, so it doesn't seem like much, but I'm sure some of you have probably come across uh, a, a tanky character like a Quang or a Greystone or a Severog or a Rampage running Thermo Bond. It really, really does work. And mixed in with the fact that he can give himself so much armor and he's got so much life steal, he's very hard to deal with. Okay, so starting off, I will take my Sorcerer's Ward. I will then put one down and back. Okay, from here I grab my Guardian Scythe. Now, how, what you do from here is completely and utterly up to you. The way that I would generally do it is if I know I'm against a team of people that I know that rotate a lot, before I do any more upgrades, I will grab my Guardian's Ward. If I feel I can get away with it for a while, I will at the very least upgrade this and then slot my Ward in. Okay, uh, now from here, I go into at least one more Void Steel Dagger. Uh, and from here it's a toss up whether I grab Void Steel Dagger or Whirling Wand. A lot of the times Whirling Wand is pretty pretty beneficial grabbing right now. Uh, it's going to up your DPS quite a lot. If we have a look, uh, and we're at 104.09, if we grab this we go to 123.61. If we grab this we go to 140. So it's, uh, it's a little bit better going for the Whirling Wand. And then obviously we go for this other one anyway. Okay, now the good thing about this build is, and considering that match times aren't always that long and you're not getting to full build, you can pretty much just build all your damage first. Uh, and you have a you have a uh, Void Steel Dagger or put your Guardian Scythe in one of these active slots so that you can fit this Blood Soaked Armor in at some point, okay? So we're going to put this Void Steel Dagger on here, uh, and from here... What I would generally do is if I've been needing to tank for my team, I will start to, uh, I will grab my blood soaked armor and then I'll start to slot out here. But if you are not needing to tank too much, you can simply replace this whirling wand with your meteor whirling wand. Okay. Now you have your two slots left. So what I would do from here uh, is normally get rid of my guardian scythe, which as I said would be in a different slot. Okay. Uh, but I can't actually do that for the sake of this, so we're going to get rid of this guy, and uh, oh, which is the wrong one. So we're going to get rid of this guy and this guy, and just put these on, okay? Uh, and Thermo Bond is normally the last thing I take, uh, unless I feel like I need it earlier. It's always there, ready to go. Okay, so as you can see, we don't have the highest basic attack or uh, DPS, but we do have enough to sort of make a difference uh, if you look at all of his abilities you are still doing 300 damage with your light of heavens uh, 150 with your judgment of the heavens so there's 450 if you land a tether and use light of the heavens and then another 516 from your ultimate so you still are doing damage but the great part about this is that when you use your uh, light of the heavens you're going up to 167 basic resistance and you're going up to 159 ability resistance so for them two and a half seconds you're extremely hard to kill uh, so that's the build guys it's only uh, 120 power uh, 163 point for attack speed 8 pen I just use these pen cards because it's just a little bit extra damage considering you're not running much damage you may as well use pen cards on the, the damage cards that you're using we got an extra 150 max health. Oh, no, we don't because we haven't maxed that card out because <laughs> I'm an idiot. So we have, um, uh, what's that, 1,341 health, uh, 2,341 health. I still need to get a lot more sleep. Uh, so it's a very, very tanky build. It doesn't seem like much. I know 2,300 health does not seem like much, but you really do have to take into account that his... Uh, his Light of the Heavens does make him very, very tanky, and his Gift of the Heavens also makes him quite tanky. Okay, so that is my build for him, guys. I will have an alternate build coming out soon that's a little bit kind of tanky crit build, um, using Golden Veil, etc. 
Uh, so keep your eye out for that. But as I said, that is it for now, guys. I hope you try this build. I hope you find it uh, decent. Uh, if you do, and if you did enjoy this video, please smash that like button. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Leave me any suggestions whatsoever. Subscribe if you're not already. But with that said, guys, thank you so, so much for watching. I love your face. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.